Oi friends, today we're gonna start adding some menus. Pretty much we're only gonna have three of them. We're gonna have a start menu, we're gonna have a pause menu and a death screen menu. I wanna start with the death screen menu because I think it's gonna add the most to our gameplay. We're finally going to be able to restart and replay the game. Starting off, I want to create the actual UI for it, and then we'll do the functionality of the buttons and things. I like to have my scene view as one here, so I'll just do that real quickly. And in order to do this kind of properly, um, I will create a different canvas. You could do everything under one canvas, but why not split it up? I'll just rename the current canvas to something like uh, HUD or something like that. And then I'll just right click UI and canvas and this is going to be our end screen or that screen I'll call it end canvas and I'll just name it like that and the HUD uh, canvas like that just so we know those are the canvases and I'll just move it up here so they're pretty close I want to add some kind of a background to it so we know we died uh, I'll go UI and then I'll add a simple image to it and this is going to be background and if you click this uh, pivoting thing here you can hold alt and then click the bottom right uh, icon and it will stretch it across the uh, screen and then I'll change the color to a bit of a red color and you can turn down the uh, alpha down here I'll probably go for around 40 just so we know like blood you know we ended we died under this, I'm going to create a new image, and this is going to be like the menu background. Actually, we're going to call it the buttons parent. I think that describes it better. And at this point, you just want to scale it uh, depending on how big you want it. I'm going to go for about 300 in width and 500 in height. Actually, that's too much. Uh, 400 at height. 300 by 400. We'll keep it white for now just so we can see where it is. Under this, I'm going to add a text image. This is going to be the title. Currently, we don't have a custom font that we're going to use, so I'll just use the default for now. We can change that later. Uh, I'm going to set the alignment to middle and middle. In order to do this kind of properly, I'm going to go to the buttons parent and I will add a vertical layout group. Now, this is going to sort all our things. And just to see the car colors as they are, I'll just disable post-processing in here. And then in the buttons parent vertical layout group, I'm going to control child size width, just like that. So now it, well, you can't really see that, kind of stretches it to the parents width. And I'll set this to you died or something like that. You died, exclamation mark. And you can change the font size to about let's say 54 but you can see it doesn't show up anymore that's what because you have to play with the height here and that the height should be around 65 like that and now we can we, we can tell that we died next I'm gonna add some buttons so we're gonna go right click on buttons parent UI and add a button for now I'll just call it button uh, we want to create some kind of a prefab that we can you know duplicate a lot because we're gonna well we're gonna have three buttons I would say we're gonna have a restart button a resume or eh, restart main menu and exit game or something like that so yeah three buttons I don't like this default UI curved thing that the button does so I'll just go to the source image on the button and I'll change this to none and now it's much nicer I'd say the color of the button I'll go for a darker color and then I'll change the text under it to a white color and I'll change the font size to maybe 40 and change the button height like that to 50 I like this button so I'll just duplicate it uh, three times and you can see since we're using a layout group on our buttons parent it will automatically sort them and on my buttons parent I'll just go to the color on the image and just decrease that to zero and I will also change the title text to white. And now you can see you died and we have three buttons, three options. 
I'll rename each button uh, accordingly. So the first one is going to be restart. Then the second one is going to be called main menu. We're not going to add functionality to this right now. We need to have a main menu first. Actually, we might do it today. I don't know. And then we're going to have quit game like that. That's nice. Uh, you can rename the buttons as well. So this is going to be a restart button. Then we're going to have main menu button. And we're going to have quit game button. You could go into the player stats and just enable this one uh, from there. But I like to have kind of a parent script that's going to control all of them. And then we can call the functions from that script in other scripts. It'll make sense. So I'll go to the scripts UI and then I'm going to create a new C sharp script called uh, menu manager or we're going to call it UI manager. And this will sit on the player uh, object. So just drag it over there. If it lets me, will it let me? There we go. UI manager like that and open up the UI manager. Let's delete the default code here and Firstly, we want to be able to enable and disable uh, the both of the canvases. So we'll need variables for those. I'm going to create a serialized field, private game object. And this is going to be our HUD canvas. And let's just set that to null for now. And then this is a quite, quite a cool trick. If you just go to the end of the line, press control D, it will duplicate the same exact one. And we'll just rename this one to end canvas. Pretty simple. I want to create functions for enabling or disabling these. So I'll create a private void. Actually, that should be public. Public void set active uh, HUD. And in here, we're going to take in a bool. And we'll just call it state or something like that. Doesn't really matter. If a state is true, that means that we're setting HUD active. Then we want to set HUD canvas dot set active to state and end canvas dot set active state like that. Make sure you put an exclamation mark. That's going to make it the opposite. So if we are setting the HUD to true, this will set it to false. And then we actually don't need this if statement. I don't know why I added it. Let's just line that up. For example, if we give it true, it's going to set this to true and this to false. If we give it false, it's going to set this to false and this to true. We can only use this because we have two canvases uh, or two kind of UIs. If you had more, you would have to do a bit differently. But since we only have two, it's quite good. Now we can call this method whenever we want to. And whenever we start the game, so I'll just create a private void start. And this is going to be set active HUD and we'll set this to true. So we enable the HUD and disable the end screen. For now, I think that's pretty much all we have to do. Let's just implement this set active HUD uh, to our die method. And our die method is located in our player stats. So we have our player stats here and you can see we have a, well, we don't have yet, but if you go to your character stats, you can see we have a die method and it's a virtual. That means we can override it in its uh, children classes and our player stats does derive from character stats. So that's good. So down here, I'll just public override void die. And we're going to call base.die. That means it's going to call the previous functions uh, thing. So it will actually just set is that is tr to true. So that's something we want to do. And also here, I would like to get a reference to our UI manager. So we'll create a private UI manager. And this is going to be UI. And then whenever we get references here in the start method, I can just set UI equal to get component. UI manager. And then down here I can say UI manager or sorry UI dot set active HUD to false, which is going to enable our end screen and um, disable our HUD. We 
still do have some problems with this, uh, but I want to show you what those are before we actually start doing anything. So you can see on our uh, player, we just have to drag the HUD canvas in there and the end canvas in there. And we just didn't make sure that the end canvas fits the size. Uh, make sure in render mode, you set, uh, well, not in render mode, in uh, canvas scaler, you change constant pixel size to scale with screen, 1920 by 1080 and match with height, just like that. And click play. In order to test it, well, you can see first off that the HUD canvas is enabled and the end screen is disabled. And let's just die real quick. Oh no, don't attack me. What am I going to do? I'm going to die. And you can see we died, but everything else, you can still walk around and look around and things like that. So I want to disable some of the player's mechanics in here. And I also want to enable the cursor so we can click the actual buttons. In order to disable the player, uh, we can just implement the isDead function or isDead variable into it because in our uh, character stats or player stats rather, uh, we have isDead and isDead is set to true whenever we die. So in our player controller, uh, so we could technically just in handle movement here whenever we get the input and everything like that and we set our move direction and we actually move. In here we could just say if is dead is true then or sorry if is dead is false then we would call these functions but we currently don't have is dead defined here and we should really get our player stats in here so we'll go private player stats stats and then in our get references uh, down here we can just set stats equal to oh my bad stats equal to get component player stats and then in uh, in here we can say stats dot is dead and you can see it's currently unaccessible because that variable is private in our character stats but we do have a public boolean that um, returns is dead it's just a function a boolean function so in, in uh, our player controller, where is it, where is it, where is it? We can say if uh, exclamation mark is, or sorry, stats that is dead and just end it off like that. So if we're not dead, then we execute this code. If we are dead, then we don't execute it. And pretty much we're going to do the same thing in our camera controller. In the update, wherever we handle mouse look, we want to do the same thing here, uh, just there. So we need to get the serialized field. Actually, it doesn't have to be a serialized field. It can just be private player stats stats. And then uh, we don't get any references here. So I'll just quickly make that. So we can just say get references just to keep it clean. And then I'll copy that down here. I'll create a private void get references. And in here we can say stats is equal to get component in children because we're doing this from camera uh, player stats. So we're not doing this from the player object, but from the camera object, I think. And now uh, here we're going to do exactly the same thing. So if exclamation mark uh, stats that is dead is false. Well, that means it's false. And then we're going to just do this, copy that into there just like that and now that should completely uh, or that should work completely fine for some reason our stats in here are returning now that's completely my bad for some reason i put in children it should be in parent my bad props to you if you caught on that and changed it yourself because that's just stupid let's see now let's quickly die and you can see now we can't move or look around and we just have to enable the cursor now and we can do that from our camera controller because here are the uh, unlock and lock cursor functions so here whenever we check is dead we can just quickly say else if so if we are dead and cursor dot lock state is equal to cursor lock mode locked so we check if the cursor is locked 
oh, my bad, is equal. You need two equal signs there. Then uh, we just set cursor dot lock state equal to cursor lock mode, or we just say unlock cursor. That would be much nicer. Unlock cursor, just like that. Good. So now we'll get the cursor as well. Let's see. And now we get the cursor and we can click on everything. We're still getting input from our weapon shooting. So we'll have to fix that as well. So in our weapon shooting script, whenever we here in input get key key code mouse zero, uh, we can quickly just say private player stats, stats, do the exact same thing. And yes, we could have just disabled the scripts, but this is fine as well. I didn't think we would need to do so many things. Stats is equal to get component player stats, just like that. And then here we can say oh, input get key mouse zero. And actually, we're all just going to wrap this all into there, just like that. Copy those two functions. And it's only going to do that. Oh, my bad. It's only going to do that if um, stats or exclamation mark stats is dead is dead is false like that and now we're not going to be able to do that as well but let's finally add the functionality to buttons currently uh we can only do two buttons so let's do those uh let's do the quit button first so in our we want to do that in our ui manager just like this and we're going to create two functions they're going to be public void quit game or just quit uh, quit like that and we're gonna go application dot quit that's very simple and it will close the game it won't now because we're in unity but it will you know usually um, now let's also create a public void uh, restart and all we're gonna do here is restart the level so we'll need to be using unity engine dot level scene management not level scene management like that and all we have to do here is say scene manager dot oh my bad scene manager dot load scene and we're going to load you know which scene do we want to load uh, let's just quickly put one in here and we have to set that up well actually let's keep it zero for now we'll set it up next time because we need to do some other things let's just keep it simple so you have to go to the edit or sorry I think it's file uh, build settings and then here you only have one scene which is zero uh, tomorrow I think we're gonna add the the main menu and then we're gonna have a different scene which is actually gonna be zero because we want to launch onto that scene whenever we start the game doesn't matter uh, just put zero there and make sure that this scene is there if it isn't add open scene that's it and we just have to add that functionality to the buttons. So we'll go to our end canvas, background, button, parent. Uh, we're going to do the restart and quit. Actually, we don't have to open them. So for the quit button, we're going to go on click. And then here, we're going to give it the player. No function. We're just going to go UI manager dot quit. And on the restart button, we're just going to give it the player right there. And I know that's not the cleanest way of doing it, but it doesn't matter. And here, we'll just go restart. Let's quickly play and test this out we can only test out the restart button really come on oh that he just spawned from the wall good uh, you can see if we click somewhere else it's not attacking anymore restart we'll reset the scene and you can start playing again nice Whew, that was a bit longer than I expected but uh, it's a lot of work that we did so it's fine uh, I think that's it for today. Hopefully this helped you and tomorrow we're doing the main menu. Okay now, bye bye.